Mr. Secretary, before the break, we were discussing uh, the problem with the twins uh, in foster care uh, who were abused and one died uh, two weeks after you took over as secretary and you went down there and you meticulously uh, investigated what happened and some changes came, uh, became aware that were, were needed to okay. you. Uh, there are a lot of other programs you administered uh, that require protection of children that are under your care and protection of others. So what are some of the uh, programs that you're putting into effect, changes that you are making throughout the department to make sure that vulnerable people are taken care of? Right. Well, you know, the most significant one is really tied to the child welfare system, and we call it the child protection uh, part of the program, which is the front end part of, of child welfare, which is when investigators are, are called to go investigate a potential situation of child abuse and, or neglect. And, uh, you know, particularly in the last uh, uh, couple months, there's been a lot of publicity nationally about uh, child abuse. Our investigators have a tremendous responsibility. I mean, you know, these are the individuals who are going into a home, knocking on a door, not knowing what's on the other side of that door, not knowing what's going to happen there. And they have to go into a home and make one of the most important decisions that will ever affect that family, you know, in, in that is there abuse happening and does the child need to be removed from that, that uh, family. And what I found when I got here is that process has major, major design flaws in it, uh, using my uh, consulting speak. The design and, uh, uh, d describe some of those yeah, flaws. Yeah, design flaws. Well, first of all, our cases, the number of uh, cases each investigator, they, some, some investigators had 30, 40, 50 cases a, per, a person. So they didn't have time to do their job adequately because their caseloads were so high. The amount of paperwork and bureaucracy that we had created over the years that these investigators have to go through. They spend much more of their time filling out paperwork than they're actually in the home investigating cases. And then just the, 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 um, the support and infrastructure uh, that doesn't exist uh, for those workers. And the most evident point of that is 40% of my investigators quit every year. And so when you have 1,600 employees doing this function, 40% of them quit every year. What turnover that is. Yeah, and you can't run a McDonald's with 40% turnover. You know, more or less running a function that is, you know, going to be, uh, you know, making the most important decision in a, in a potential family's life. So, you know, that's a dr dramatic area that, that, that we have to address. We're, we're, we're uh, designing some changes right now that we're going to be ask, asking for some legislative help uh, this legislative session. And, and I know we can improve it dramatically and make a big change. And we've already made a lot of changes just in the first several months, but it, it's a top priority for uh, this administration. Let's talk a little bit about substance abuse. Um, substance abuse brought to mind different problems a few years ago, but mm -hmm. what does it bring to the Secretary's mind right now? Well, it's one of the things that I probably uh, misunderstood more than any other area when I first uh, came into this job. Because just like you said, uh, you know, when we think of substance abuse, uh, you know, my generation, it was a different set of drugs and uh, uh, different types of uh, abusers, but it, it is all about prescription drug problems now. And we are really in a catastrophic situation in this state, uh, one which I don't think we'd completely understand uh, how deep a problem we have and how long a, this problem will last. You know, in the last legislative session, I think the legislature made some great decisions about the enforcement side of pill mills and, and uh, going after uh, uh, the prescription drug problem from the enforcement side. But, you know, we are now in a situation where we just have uh, uh, enormous addictions in this state, and it bleeds across all of our programs. Uh, it's not just uh, individual families, but a lot of these families have kids. You know, we see a, almost 30 percent of our child protective investigations are now because of, of families that, you know, have major uh, drug addiction problems and neglect issues are. You're current. really talking a lot about prescription drugs here, it's, not it's, necessarily it's illegal drugs. drugs. That's right. Yeah, it's, so it's it's a different it's a different drug, uh, it's a different addiction, and it's uh, and it's really a whole a different uh, 
uh, rehabilitation type of program. Then, you know, in the older days with, with, with the older drugs and, and with alcoholism, you know, it's a, it's a, those were different types of treatment programs. And unfortunately, when, you, when you're addicted to prescription drugs, you know, the, the, the rehab takes months. Uh, the relapse is, is a very high potential, uh, which will then require even uh, more rehab. And so, you know, we are having to really adjust the types of programs that are available across the state to deal with this, uh, with this uh, epidemic. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the role of the department in the Medicaid program. Uh, I think the yeah. role of the department is, is basically to determine whether or not someone is eligible for Medicaid. Uh, that's a big, that's a big responsibility. And uh, I wanted to ask you about how that role is going to change with the new federal health care yeah, yeah, law right. and kind of how you're dealing with that strategically. Right. You know, we determine eligibility for uh, Medicaid as well as food stamps and, and the TANF programs and some of the other social services programs today. And we do that in a, in a method called um, integrated eligibility, which in most cases, if we determine you're eligible for food stamps and you're also eligible for some of those other programs, we help determine that all at the same time. Uh, but the, you know, the, the growth in the, in the Medicaid uh, and food stamp situation has been enormous. Um, unfortunately, with that uh, tremendous growth because of uh, the economic situations, the level of fraud uh, in terms of uh, eligibility determination has grown dramatically as well. Uh, so, you know, one of, the th one of the things we're now looking at implementing is some new fraud detection capabilities in our eligibility processes so that we can un uncover people who particularly are doing identity theft and using other identities to uh, claim for Medicaid and those types of programs. So we're trying to implement that. And then right on, on the heels coming behind us is exactly what you said, which is the, the uh, whole new uh, Medicaid eligibility programs that, that come with uh, the new federal laws. And so we're going to have to be preparing to, to figure out, you know, how do we change our programs to uh, comply with those programs. And that, uh, that's going to require a very large uh, transformation of how we do our eligibility processes, primarily from the back end in terms of a lot of the computer systems and integrating our programs with the programs at ACA, with some of the other uh, federal eligibility programs like Healthy Families and Healthy Kids and, 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 el and integrating all those programs into one coherent system, it'll be a, a very large task that we'll have to uh, accomplish over the next three to four years. Well, I know the legislature has been wrestling with what's the best kind or system, I guess, for uh, providing Medicaid uh, service, whether it's managed care right. or fee-for-service and so forth. Um, and it's, the legislature is seeking, or the administration, uh, 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 basically an option from the federal government to be able to do that. Do you have any role in seeking uh, the approval for, from the federal government for being able to have some flexibility uh, in how you uh, dispense care? Well, t yes, uh, to a large degree. I mean, you know, it's a very cooperative effort between us and, and the Agency for Healthcare Administration, which uh, really manages the different Medicaid programs. But, you know, our job is to determine the eligibility. And, and the first thing we have to do is to really determine what is the cost structure, what is the organizational structure it's going to take to manage this enormous program. And uh, so, you know, we've actually started a process right now to do that. We have to submit that to the federal government. Uh, they have to then, in essence, uh, approve uh, both our approaches and, and, and our cost uh, uh, techniques to, to uh, implement that and then you know then we'll have to start the implementation uh, which we would have to get done in a three or four year time frame. Back to children for a moment. Uh, you have oversight over foster children but a great opportunity exists for some of those to be adopted and Absolutely. you recently uh, uh, did a webcast about adoption. Um, what are the opportunities for adoption in Florida? What's the need and uh, how can you get the word out to people that there are some really great kids that need That's to right. be adopted? That's right. You know, our adoption program uh, in Florida is really the, the best in the nation. Uh, you know, all the different states come to Florida to understand what we do. And, and we are very aggressive at promoting uh, the children that are up for adoption. And, and the reason we do that, you know, if you talk to a, a child who's in foster care, and you ask them, you know, what do you, want, what do you want to have happen in your life? Their first response is, I want to go home. 
And unfortunately, sometimes, you know, they can't go home. And so their second response is, I want stability in my life. And so they want to be adopted. And so, you know, so we owe these children that service to find a loving, caring home that these kids can be uh, adopted. You know, last year we adopted uh, 3,000 kids, uh, got adopted by Florida families. You know, we want to uh, do that number at least again this year. Uh, we just celebrated a, a month about uh, promoting adoptions here in, in the month of November, uh, where we had over 400 kids uh, adopted just this month in November. So, you know, it's, 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 it's really one of the best parts of, of, of my job is to, to see communities come together and people, uh, you know, invest in these children and be willing to, to be forever family for them. And it's something that we will continue to push, you know, every month of the year to, to try to help these kids. In total, we have 20,000 kids in foster care. So, you know, we have a lot of kids that need to be adopted. Oh, unfortunately, we only have about a minute left. Uh, you talked about one of your legislative priorities earlier. Uh, just a quick summary for legislators and staff and others who might be watching. What are the most pressing needs that you want to lay before them for the, your department for the 2012 session? Sure. Well, well, number one is child protection. I mean, we have to help. We have to protect our children, and uh, we have to do a better job there. You know, we need the the money, the resources, the capabilities uh, to get that function right, and we will have a package for this legislative session okay. to deal with that. Number two uh, is we're looking. At, we haven't talked a lot about our, our mental health institutions and, and our mental health programs, but but we have a lot of opportunity to continue to improve the, the cost side of mental health by implementing more efficient programs and we want to create more community-based programs, step-down uh, capabilities. From the big institutions. From the big institutions to local community institutions where we can uh, help people uh, rehabilitate in their own communities and, and quite frankly at a much lower cost. And so we want to start that journey in implementing some of those programs and we'll need some legislative help to make that happen. Mr. Secretary, it's been a pleasure and I want you to uh, come back and join us again and talk about some of these incredibly important uh, programs that you administer. Great. Thanks for having me on.